primary production continues to be in the crosshairs of the government. It's a climate-based attack on our prosperity, on our food security, an attack on our history and, in fact, an attack on our way of life. The attacks are on almost every aspect of our agricultural and mining processes, from permits to water to fertiliser, transport to land access and land clearing. And after targeting some sections of the mining industry, the Enviro Zealots are now coming for farm financing. Westpac announced this week that they wouldn't be backing farmers who did not comply with a zero deforestation target. And incredibly, this is one of the crusades, but a lot of these crusades are led by taxpayer-funded outfits like the Environmental Defenders Office, which boasts of being the largest environmental legal centre in the Australia Pacific dedicated to protecting our climate, communities and shared environment by, right, by providing access to justice, running groundbreaking litigation and leading law reform advocacy. This is the tip of the green lawfare spear, people, and it provides cover for the government's eco-zealots to pursue their goals, while the Prime Minister emails contrary platitudes. Joining me now to discuss just how damaging this designated charity is to our way of life and our agricultural and resource future is LNP Senator Susan MacDonald. Senator, great to have you on the show again. The, the Albanese government keeps saying it's supportive of mining and supportive of agriculture, but then it funds groups like the EDO, which is fighting almost all the progress in these sectors. Is it talking out both sides of its mouth here? Ah, uh, Corey, th this is crazy because Australia has a long history of being a primary production nation, whether it be resources or agriculture. And, I mean, it's important for a couple of reasons. It's important because resource royalties and company taxes and well-paid jobs has paid the bills. It's been the golden goose for Australia. But agriculture, growing food and fibre, you know, is there anything more important to do in the world, particularly when we've got political uncertainty, we've got conflicts in various parts of the world, we see uh, countries like China and Russia trying to withhold their, the export of fertilisers uh, because they know they'll need them as part of their agricultural supply chains to feed their people. And yet in Australia, we've got the Labor government funding these environmental activists to the tune of nearly $10 million in the last budget. And what are they there for? Well, their sole purpose is to challenge government decisions, government regulators' approvals uh, on, on agricultural projects, irrigation projects, mining, uh, all of these things. And yet the government is funding somebody to slow the process down uh, and to make it harder to do business in this country. We're seeing investment flee. We're seeing other countries... Uh, receive the dollars that should be coming to Australians for their jobs, for their taxes, so that we can continue to enjoy this first world lifestyle that we've got, Corey. But instead, uh, we've got Labor talking a big game, but it's not what people say. You've got to watch what they do. And what this government is doing is undermining investment in important projects, but certainly in agriculture. And I think uh, we've got to call this out loudly and clearly because I don't think there would be a nation on earth that would knowingly uh, attack its agricultural industry the way that Labor is allowing to happen. It's extraordinary. It's friendly fire. And I, I kudos to the coalition government. I think they stopped funding this uh, abomination back in 2013 or 14, and the $10 million, as you said, snuck in in the last budget. But it's not quite accurate to say we're the only place that's attacking agriculture. I mean, we've seen overseas by... The eco-activists, they're targeting farmers. They, they want to cull healthy cattle in Ireland. They, restrictions on fertiliser usage and they want to shut down family farms. We saw that in the Netherlands. That troubling process appears to be on the march here, fuelled partly by this EDO, but the, the Albanese government wants to surrender basically our sovereignty in the agricultural sector to the UN and the zealots there, it appears. That's exactly right, Corey. We're seeing this creep of this ideology... Uh, that is anti-agriculture and anti-food production, and as I've already said, just madness. Uh, so this layering, whether it be, uh, you know, the Ag Minister, Murray Watt, announcing this methane pledge, uh, whether it be the, the removal of water into intensive agricultural projects in the Murray-Darling, the banning of gillnet fishing in Queensland, 
Uh, the list goes on and on. And this is uh, incredibly serious because on its own, each decision uh, doesn't seem so important as when you look at the layering, the industrial relations, the strikes that are happening in meat processing plants this week. Uh, I think it is, it is very, very dangerous what they're doing. It is an ideology uh, that doesn't understand that in order for you and me and millions of Australians to sit on the couch tonight and eat something, to go to work tomorrow without having to keep a chicken in the yard or a cow, grow their own veggies, our Australian farmers feed us and they allow us, 99% of the population, to go out knowing that we have food security. But that is hard fought for. And uh, when we start to see financial organisations, insurance companies led by APRA, the Australian Prudential Regulator, the sort of uh, regulatory uh, requirements they're putting onto agriculture are not reasonable, they're not practical, and there is absolutely no understanding of what it's like to actually go, go and grow something, whether it's commodity cycles, uh, climate cycles, uh, price cycles. It, there is, it is hard work to bring a crop or, or a herd to fruition, to be able to sell the excess, stay in business uh, and do it in a profitable, sustainable way. And yet this government is doing all it can just yeah. to undermine this side and that. Yeah, it's a huge challenge. And you mentioned the layering. And I, I said in my opening editorial, uh, Susan, that, that there's so much noise, people don't seem to realise what is going on. But every seemingly innocuous announcement by government piled on top of the other one and the previous one and the previous one, all of a sudden something breaks. Now, farmers have got a supportive group, the LNP, uh, the National Party, there are plenty of Liberals that are very supportive of their cause. They've also got a National Farmers Federation, a peak body, What's their focus on this? I haven't heard much from them in recent years. Uh, shouldn't they be out there yelling from the rooftops or from the farm sheds? Well, I'm absolutely delighted that the, uh, the National Farmers Federation with the new president, uh, David Johensky from Victoria, has drawn a very clear line in the sand. And he said to the government, enough, enough. You have to stop threatening agricultural production, the important work that we do. Uh, you cannot equate agricultural emissions to the emissions from building a luxury motor car or uh, we could probably come up with a long list. Agriculture needs to be treated more preciously. The NFF has stood up and said, enough. You have to stop these attacks on live export, on water into the Murray-Darling, uh, on gill net fishing, on a range of things. And I think it's very educational to see the Agricultural Minister, Murray Watt, calling it going to war with the government. Well, this is actually the job of the NFF, is to stand up and protect its members, to call out this outrageous regulatory attacks and to make sure that Australians are protected, that the cost of food is protected, that Australian farmers are protect, protected and that we continue to have one of the best agricultural systems yeah, yeah. in the world. Our Australian farmers are not subsidised. They work incredibly hard and it should not be that they have to fight the government to get on and do the important work that Australians want to see them be successful at. You're absolutely right, and I'm heartened that the NFF have reclaimed their voice again. Yeah. Thank you for your time, Senator Susan McDonald, and uh, keep up the great work in Canada.